Hi, I'm Nicole Erkin, Research Director for Mad Money, and welcome to Behind the Scenes of the Show. I'm here with Jim Kramer, and all week on Mad Money, we've been, talk been talking about biotechs and the next big pharma names as we see it. Now, Jim, we, you like big pharma, the yes. traditional names, the Johnson & Johnson, right. the Bristol's. But all this week, we've been highlighting names that actually have real growth, not just cash return to shareholders. But this is an unusual time, Nicole, because we have this bifurcation. We have old tech, which generates a gigantic amount of cash flow. Right. And whether that be Pfizer or the aforementioned Bristol-Myers, which we right. talk about, or frankly, uh, Glaxo, uh, AstraZeneca. These are companies that don't have the growth that they used to, but right. they do have the cash flow, and they fired a lot of people, and they've got these drugs. Some have come off patent, but we're pretty much past the patent cliff. So those okay. stocks are attractive as a fixed this income is equivalent. This the post-Lipitor age, right. and we've talked about it. Now, yes. people who want that growth are viewing those as if they're bonds. Right. Now, there's another group of buyers that just wants growth, and that's a traditional uh, mutual fund, all right, or, or maybe an aggressive hedge fund. And uh, because they can lever them up, they can borrow money and invest in these. And these these companies all have exceptional growth. And way you, you value them is not on dividends because they don't have it, but on what's known as the out years. Right. Uh, and they're very cheap if you look on, uh, say, 2015, 2016 numbers. Right. And the pipeline. Now, we've been calling these the innovators. Yes. And when a lot of investors think of biotechs, they think of a big win, a big FDA decision that's going right. to shoot a stock up 100%. But the two names that we've highlighted thus far, Gilead and Celgene, are two names that have grown by huge standards when right. you look at the price performance over the last year or two, but importantly have multiple pipeline drivers. Right. Gilead in particular was an HIV play, but now is a hep C play as well. And we like these dual pronged or tri pronged drivers because there are multiple revenue Right, and, and one of the things we know is, that, and we've seen this from Allergan, you get this pipeline within exactly. a pipeline, and what's happened is, is that it's entirely possible that the Gilead Hep C drug can be used for other indications. Uh, Gilead has this AIDS franchise. Uh, if I'm reading Fred Hassan's book now about leadership, and he was the guy who reinvented Pharmacy Upjohn, and then he reinvented Shearing Plow, sold these companies. And what those companies had, they had a couple good drugs. So then they were of appealing to Big Pharma. Now, these companies may actually exceed the value of Big Pharma one day. Right. But I, I mean, there's two classes. There's the juniors, and those are orphan drug. And then there are these new, I guess you call them senior biotechs. Right. And they have a lot of irons. They're not easily stopped. They're, they, they can be valued on their pipeline. And they're terrific investments. Got it. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Now, if you're a biotech investor, it doesn't mean a quick trade. These dual-pronged drivers, a Celgene, a Gilead, keep checking back for, on Mad Money for more. I'm Nicole Erkin, Research Director for Mad Money. Thanks for being with us.